Okay, we're back. So, Paul on Paul Jung on box botnets. You have the floor. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So today we will talk about uh, box botnet. We'll see what it is. Uh, first time Paul Jung working for Excelium. It's a security Luxembourg firm. And uh, I have a good news. Uh, the whole presentation will be without IDA. So OK, for source, uh, we are not laughing yet. You will see the next presentation. I will remember this slide. <laughs> so uh, once upon a time, uh, there was a guy who would uh, take a look at logs. Uh, actually, it was me. And I found this kind of raid entry. So my website, my parameters, and then the word doc. And a link to a picture. Seems weird. So uh, when you download the picture and take a look at the file itself, it actually was not a picture at all. It was a script, a PHP script, which tried to download another file, a scan.txt, and try to execute it by, by a lot of uh, methods. So first, it was nice because sometimes I do some uh, pen testing, and you will learn how to launch something, how to download something. Actually, I have learned a lot of methods for downloading files on a Unix system. It was useful. And uh, that's the first point. So I see this kind of logs, this kind of downloads. And when I take a look further in many logs, I found some other injection you may have probably in your servers. So first, uh, you have to be careful because sometimes it looks like picture, but actually it's not a picture. Um, you may find some download of PHP files, which looks really like a picture, but in the body of the file, you have the GIF headers, and then you have some PHP code. Why? Um, there is some exploit uh, on some uh, module of uh, web CMS server, and uh, you need to download a real picture. And after that, you may include the code in your PHP. And PHP is quite, well, like a uh, four. It's, it's really, really, really flexible. You may have some binary data, and then a PHP header, and the code will be executed if you include this file. So all the files that you may found are usually obfuscated. It's not high level, uh, but may, it's like that. So there is an evaluation of the PHP code, and the payload is usually uh, obfuscated by base64, by um, zip, by the rot13. So it's not directly readed, readable, sorry. So um, first, how to deal with this kind of payload? There is a nice website, a DD code, which does the, the job. So you put your file, and it gives you the file in a clear text. But the problem is that it's, um, this website uh, lets the, the scripts on the website. So you cannot remove them, and it's available to everyone. So it's a problem since you don't know yet what is inside the PHP file to put your PHP file. So I have to do another tool, uh, which works. Uh, it's in Python. So for evaluation of uh, PHP, it's quite weird. But it does the job more or less. So you may use it also. So now we have some uh, injection of, uh, of PHP mainly. And uh, how does it work to, to have the, the big picture of that? So First, you need web vulnerabilities. Uh, we will see there is a lot of vulnerabilities on web system, on CMS, and so on. And um, you need also ejection. So people use it and inject your web server. And then uh, what you have after that, what is the goal of the injection, is to put a bunch of files. First, you have a, a web shell and a bot client. We will see the bot client after. But the web shell, what is the web shell? Well, it's a bunch of PHP scripts. Looks like that. So sometimes it's the basics one. This one is able to download, execute files. So it's quite known. Uh, you are able to do some uh, IRC, um, IRC jump with that, because uh, you are able to, to have IRC relays. Sometimes you have more sophisticated one, well designed, uh, which are nice, because uh, you could do also what you want on your web server, it's able to grab some uh, logs uh, to see some password. It's able to retrieve configuration file. It's able to use a copy and so on. You may drop some binaries on the server. So 
that's what you may find on your server. That's the first part, the web shell. After this part, you have also some IRC botnets. So usually, you have two kinds of IRC botnets. Uh, you may have Perl scripts or PHP scripts. Uh, so to be clear, uh, they have a server. And your compromised web server is connecting back to the IRC server. That's how the basics work. So for that to be successful, you need a PHP Unix web server, uh, like one you may have uh, at OVH and so on. <laughs> for example, for example, maybe you have them. Uh, you need a weak CMS because it's uh, heavily rely on all uh, CMS uh, vulnerabilities, and uh, your server need direct access to outside because, of course, the the, the PHP script, the boot, is directly connecting back to the uh, IRC server. So to be successful, the best factor of that is, uh, of course, uh, some dedicated uh, box uh, of VPS servers like uh, Overge, but others. Uh, and um, that's, that's how it works. So the question is now, because now it's not new, you have some vulnerabilities on web server, on CMS, it's quite old, it's running since years, and uh, uh, people are abusing that. So let's take a look at the script first to see some little things uh, funny. Uh, first, uh, it's not so easy to grab it in your uh, servers. Because they are, for example, in this uh, Perl script, they are using and abusing the arguments, yeah? And they're replacing the string of the process. So if you do a PS, a simple PS, you don't directly see the script, but you may see some uh, other strings. So it's not so easy to spot if you have one of these boats running on, uh, on your servers. Uh, after, you have some weird things, uh, for example, here, they play with signals to hook uh, keyboard control C and so on, which is weird since it's a web application, so I don't know yet. And uh, uh, one of the major features that you may have inside uh, all the scripts, so it's common, it's common to web shell, it's common to all IRC botnet uh, scripts, is that you have snitch functions. So here an example of a one of the web shell. In the web shell, you have the possibility to drop some binaries. So binaries are in the PHP script, uh, encoded as bash 64 And one of them is evaluated just after. And that's really common. You have that on uh, every script that you find. You may find one of these function. Sometimes it's uh, directly like that. Sometimes it's a, a request to a website for a picture just to have the refer of the server which uh, which do the which do the which is uh, uh, compromised, and uh, in this case, for example, you have a real snip, uh, simple snitch function. We send a mail to uh, an address and reports uh, reports the, the the guy which uh, do the click, uh, activate the backdoor, and the guy uh, where is for the, the server where is the backdoor? Sorry, so that's really common. So. I have seen a lot of uh, IRC scripts, a lot of, and it's always the same. Always you have two scripts, two kinds of scripts, the Perl one and the PHP one. There are many differences, but it's always the base same script. Everybody is copying everybody and changing some minor changes, but everybody has the same script. So basically, with two scripts, you do the job. So now, we know that you have a Batmaster, which runs the IRC server directly on a compromised web server. And you have uh, other servers, which are compromised uh, by the previous injection. We are connecting back to this IRC server. And the Batmaster, of course, have a little botnet. So what could it do with this kind of botnet? Uh, first, you have some possibility of direct execution. So you may launch commands on the server and so on. Um, the real problem for that is that many of the Linux distribution are quite good in uh, configuring the web server. So you are running with uh, HTTP, uh, Vividata and so on. So you can't do a lot. 
but you may execute some simple things. Uh, you may have some uh, maintenance commands, so you could change the name of the bot. You could change the uh, channel because it's IRC, so you have a lot of channels you connect where you want. You could change even the IRC server, so you could maintain your botnet. You have some spam. It's really in easy to send spam with that. So you have commands to uh, tell to uh, send. Uh, you give a bunch of email, a source, uh, co uh, source uh, body, and it sends a lot of spams. That's possible with this kind of botnet. And you have a DDoS agent, uh, at least on most, most sample of the D or botnet, you have a DDoS agent. So DDoS agent was, is, is uh, it's not finished, we will say that. Um, you may UDP flooding, so it's, that's the best part, we will say. Uh, it sends random data to random port, source port to one destination, so it may be useful. Of course, uh, since it runs as a lower privilege, it's called, it can't do some spoofing, so it's always the real IP of the attacker. You may have the same with TCP, so it's a bunch of synflood. And you have some embryonic uh, HTTP flooding. That's the funny part, because uh, on the Perl one, for example, uh, they do that, but the, and everybody is copying this code, and they forget to do the try catch. So if you drop only one request, the script crash. So um, is it used? I think so, because on some forum, uh, on some IRC server, you may find some uh, botnet with, uh, with channel called DDoS, so it may be used. And uh, actually, this one was uh, have a good, um, a good network connectivity. They were running at OVH, sorry. Uh, but that's nice. It means that OVH has good connectivity. Um, and uh, this kind of server, uh, with only 10 servers, they are able to, to flood many, many customers. It's, it's enough for many firms, which are only connected uh, with uh, one or two gigabytes. It's enough. So that's the kind of uh, usage you may have with this kind of bot. So what could you do also? The fun thing is that the botnet itself is used to seek uh, other clients for the botnet, other compromised server. How does it work? Uh, for example, uh, on uh, some, uh, some server, on some uh, IRC scripts, you have a lot of uh, vulnerability scanners for common CMS. So uh, the botnet itself will use, uh, oops, sorry, will use um, search engine to find other server and to try to infect them. Uh, once it works, you have a more, more, uh, more uh, boot in your botnet. So uh, it's funny to see that they use a lot of search engine, up to 37. Uh, so you have the common one, Google, Yahoo, Yandex, and so on. And you have some, um, well, you will not see every day. Well, Busca, Mama, Rosic, Big Globe, Sapo, I've learned a lot about strange and uncommon search engine. So with this search engine, they're looking for every, for example, every WordPress available and try to inject with common vulnerabilities. Once, uh, little example here, you have a botnet operator which is called Biz. Uh, you have a, a few uh, boats, so usually they don't work with big boats. Uh, they once infected, they remove the boat, they, they are stored, and they are using only 10, 20 boats at, uh, at, at, at once. Um, so uh, here, uh, BS send uh, uh, a Joomla query to see, uh, to, to find uh, some web server which match uh, com.bt uh, TLD. So the search is performed by every bot. And once a bot finds something and uh, successful inject it, it sends back what uh, he have found. So here, the injection was successful. He sent back the, the, the web page where is the bot installed and uh, send maybe some uh, credentials that it's, it's a grab. So now it's clear. Uh, if you remember the, the strange web, uh, web uh, request with the dog part. And if you take a look at the documentation, you may find why I have a dog in my query. Probably a newbie bot master. So 
Sometimes it happens. You have to learn. Uh, there is a lot of teams. Uh, it's not one guy. It's a lot of team doing the same job of other, copying each other. It's, I think it's like that. Uh, there are f a lot of, you have many names. And uh, sometimes you are some teams more proud than others. And uh, the question is, <laughs> question is uh, how big this kind of bad set could be? That's the real question. Um, so for some, uh, some IOC server, of course, they are installed on server not managed. It's not really well installed. Sometimes you may have statistics of the, uh, of the IOC server. So you may see that at a max, uh, you have 1,000. It's not uh, big. But you can't tell how many are, and are really infected because it's the number of connection to the IRC server upon a time, a maximum one. Uh, what you could do sometimes, because sometimes, sometimes you have access to, to the snitch function, and you may find uh, the email of the guy, and you have a, a list of server which are for, for which are compromised because every compromised server is sending back. To, a web, uh, to, a, to an email address uh, with the SNIT function, the address of the web server. But you have a lot of duplicates. It's not so easy. And sometimes you are more lucky. Uh, you, are more f you may find some logs of backdoors. Uh, so two years ago, uh, yeah, it was two years ago, uh, I found the logs with uh, 1,500 uh, bots, uh, which were active. Uh, well, that's not on no cap, but uh, still do the job. Um, and the real problem with that is that's always web servers. And web servers are used by people that maybe security is not their primary objective. So it's really hard to clean that. Um, the clean part was done by the circle, which is a Luxembourgish set. And as you see, uh, only after one month, they only clean a third part of the, this bot. Uh, and the problem is that after the first month, it doesn't move. And it's really hard to, to clean that at all. So attribution. Attribution. So usually when you want to do attribution, it's now, now you have to roll the attribution dices. But sometimes it's possible you are more lucky. Uh, here an example. Um, you have um, a script where all the bots are named Toolbox and an ID. If you put on Google, what is Toolbox? Uh, with a zero, a zero. Uh, you find that Toolbox is a website that mediates between the sellers and the buyers since uh, 2007. Okay. If you take a look at this website, it's clear that it's hacking. And uh, if that's the first, and, and if you take a look at the sometimes um, if you take a look at the botnet operator, which is Bayes, you may find on Web Archive uh, that Bayes, it actually, because now the, it's more clean, you can't find any more of these informations, uh, Mr. Bayes is the Toolbox CEO since 2007. Okay, maybe it's there. So we, I'm quite sure that Toolbox is operated by Bayes. That's the first point. So where are they? Uh, on Toolbox, until, uh, until mid-January, uh, mid uh, of last year, sorry. Uh, they do some uh, SMS support. If you buy a server, you have a problem, you need support, so just send an SMS, they refund, you have a new, uh, a new server. Uh, so it's an Indonesian one. Uh, and sometimes you have a lot of, um, uh, sometimes a lot of uh, commands, and some commands are Indonesian also in the script. And the funniest one, um, because bad guys also don't really securize the server, so you may sometimes be able to, to list some files. And if you take a look at the picture, which is 11.png, um, you find a guy, OK? And you find that this guy is the righteous mest, San Diego Uno is called, of Indonesia. So. I don't think it's him, but uh, I'm quite sure that they are Indonesian. And the last question is why this guy is this picture is on the server? Because I'm fresh, I have servers, 
I have no picture of a Linian Betancourt on that. So, uh, okay, so now it's clear. It's toolbox. Uh, there are websites, there are selling tools. That's one of the team. So they have a good infrastructure. Uh, now, it was not uh, like that at the beginning. So it's online since 2013. Uh, we see that. Uh, <laughs> they are using Cloudflare because they are freeing DDoS, I think so, or trying to hide IPs. Uh, so Cloudflare gives them SSL certificate. Um, I will send an abuse with a new system. Um, uh, they accept payment with Evocher, uh, Perfect Money, and of course, Bitcoins. And you may, uh, you may buy uh, what you want on the, on the, uh, on the uh, website. So you may, uh, they do mostly selling access to web server. Uh, it's cost three to five dollars, it's not a lot. Uh, you may find some other stuff like uh, black market ones, so as ever. Um, so the question is what to do? So, um, what's next? Uh, what could we do with that? So I'm still playing with them, um, and I need some help, uh, because um, the problem is to have um, bad requests, the first injection. If you have the first injection, you may be able to download the script, to take a look at the script, where is the ISA server, you just have to connect to the ISA server, and when you are in the ISA server, it's easy to find uh, all the uh, all connection to find a uh, compromised web server because you see them when they are compromised, they're going back to the ISC server and you see them. So the, the ID that I have and I start to, to play with um, is to have an agent. Uh, so it's, for, it's not for, for, for production, it's just for, for playing with them. Uh, the idea is like uh, a fail to ban agent. So it will take a look at the logs, and when it sees an injection, it gets it back to, to the system. Uh, of course, it's not an IDS. It will need, it, we don't see post, uh, it only gets, but it's enough to find injection uh, most of the time. It's, it's light. Uh, so if you want to install it on your server, please help me. Um, so the idea behind that, the idea is to uh, learn vectors of infection because they are using a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of CNS. They are using a lot of uh, tricks to install. They there are no zero day. I never see a, a new uh, exploit on one plugin. It's always some old things. But it gives you good trends to to see what is used, uh, what is um, not patched and not known. So it's a good thing to learn vectors. Uh, and I uh, try to, to, to get fast to, to send the abuse to, to the guy because most of the time you have servers and the people are not aware of that. Uh, and the real thing that I see is that some servers are um, compromised by many teams. Sometimes you have on a server, you have many scripts from many teams because they are the same script, we are doing the same search, and at the end, infecting again again the same server. So, it's, um, it's, it's hard to find. There is a lot of servers, and uh, it's not easy to clean. So uh, I need some, some injection. Uh, maybe one day uh, blacklist DNS and so on, or feed for an TLMQ. So conclusion, and it was a bit quick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's not a state-of-the-art attacks. Uh, that's clear, that's, it's simple things, uh, but it works. Uh, botnet seems not to be so big, uh, but uh, it's effective. And uh, you have to remember that when you have to a campaign of infection for a dry decks and so on, uh, usually you need what? You need three, poor, uh, three, uh, three CMS compromised uh, to put your payload. So it's uh, an infection vector, it's a basic one, it's simple, but it is used by people. And it's so easy to have a compromised uh, WordPress. So I think it should be tackled also. So uh, that's my conclusion. Um, if you have question, and we have time for question, ten minutes, I think so. Feel free.
Thank you. <coughs> Questions? Thanks, Paul. Um, I've got a question regarding uh, engaging law enforcement in that case. Uh, that's a question that I have. And hopefully we have uh, some people for law enforcement today. What could be done? Because uh, here we have a simple example uh, of uh, people that uh, are far away uh, selling things. And to my point of view, it's malicious. But what can be done? Uh, I need uh, this. They are not breaking my servers, uh, so I can I can't deploy the plane. I don't know what to do. And did you go to the police in uh, Luxembourg? No, 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 no. But Circle, for example, um, uh, Circle have, uh, was having the, the big list and have cleaned, and um, I don't I don't think the, the police was involved in that. But the, I don't know really. I don't know what to do because cr crime is not done in Luxembourg, so. Someone from law enforcement wants to react? Aurelia? So we actually in France, so probably we need to talk just after. <laughs> okay. And I've got a comment for you, Paul, regarding the picture of that uh, millionaire in Indonesia. Yeah. Um, that might be simply that they are doing uh, 419 scams, uh, using the picture to say, hey, I'm, a, I'm a, the son of a dead millionaire or something, you uh, know, the, the classic scam. I just just I yesterday, Kaspersky uh, uh, mentioned one such case of a scam using Michel Rocard's picture as a millionaire. <laughs> So you can uh, you could look at that that securelist.com uh, uh, article. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe, but in this case, uh, the picture is on the website, which are which is actually used by to to sell tools. So um, maybe they don't want to compromise this one. Um, it's strange. Thanks. Yeah, maybe they just like the picture. Yeah, maybe nice guy. Maybe it's a signature that they use on all, all of their productions? Or? I don't know. It was two pictures of people. The, the first one was a lady which is unknown on Google. <laughs> and the second one is was this one. That's a mystery. Another question? Yeah, yeah. Um, you <laughs> Did you only look into Toolbox or the other ones as well? Uh, toolbox? Uh, no, I have looked to a bunch of all uh, of uh, groups, mm -hmm. but uh, Toolbox is the uh, only one that you may relate, uh, you may Okay, because may I looked into easily. MCN actually. Sorry? And I looked into MCN and they're also in Indonesia. Uh -huh. Okay, so I think uh, it's a great place to go in holiday. <laughs> but uh, well, uh, from, from the scripts I see that you have a lot of Indonesian groups. Uh, a few things which is in Portuguese, I think so, so Brazil, Portugal, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you have a lot of uh, script in, the, in Indonesian. Last question? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>